Thanks, Deputy Murphy. Um, Mr. Mazding and Mr. O'Sullivan, <coughs> I'd say Punch's pilot is even cringe in listening to you. You've managed to present an opening statement here this morning with a. I don't know where you got the language from, curing people and finding a cure. You were the ones that caused the contamination and the disease in the first place. Do you accept that? crisis of which Permanent TSB was a player so uh, that's that's what we as a management team yes? uh, there was a financial crisis of which Permanent TSB was a player oh I know that yeah, I'm asking you are you part of the were you part of the problem it's were you uh, part of creating this it, it's disease a, it's that a, we're now dealing with it's a loaded question so my answer it's is it's not a loaded question it's a simple question the financial crisis uh, happened in Ireland All right, so you're not going there to were many uh, there I just were move many on to the next one then do you do debt for equity? As a treatment? Yeah. No. Why? Uh, when we looked at it, uh, when I was here, um, Deputy, Deputy Donnelly uh, asked us to look at that as a treatment. And from a, I think it was from a tax perspective, uh, we, 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 we couldn't get it to work. In your interest, you couldn't get it to work? You asked me a question. I, I, I'm asking you. Is Deputy it, is it Donnelly in, asked me to look at it. I just answered the question, Mr. Mazing. Is it in your interest that it wouldn't work? We we, we couldn't get it to work through uh, the tax lens. Ta this tax is is about your bank. Oh, As a tax, you couldn't get it to work ago. because it was a tax issue for your bank. Correct. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Nothing yes. to do with the customer. You just couldn't get it to to, to work for you. Yeah, not not feasible. So there's a, a treatment that you didn't ever put into action. Um, so I want to go back to your opening statement. And won't for the next couple of decades. That's, that's quite true. Deputy Doherty, yes. So you're, you're, you don't pay tax. <coughs> so your reason for not using debt for equity <coughs> for tax, for some tax reason, would not seem to stand up. Not Sure, of the ins and outs, but but I do recollect okay. the bank did take up the deputy's suggestion. What's your and position I, in the bank, Mr. O'Sullivan? So I'm director of operations. Right. And that so you're clean. not sure of the ins and outs. No, uh, I'm not uh, an accountant or uh, a tax expert, but I know this bank, and I'm sure are sure other banks, uh, because it was a good a good suggestion, did look to bring something like that. Uh, to, to customers alongside all the other treatments the banks have. So but that's one treatment that you never looked at? We couldn't make it work. You couldn't make it work for your bank? Correct. For your bank. So nothing to do with the customer. The reason I'm, I'm, I'm saying this is because... Well, it, it only works, it only works for the I bank if it, if it works for the customer. So if I, all of the emails I have here uh, since our last meeting suggest from various customers that they have tried in vain to deal with your banks. You said that your bank makes an average of 32 attempts to deal with customers to find a solution. I can't give you a number because it's your bank and your customers, but I get sufficient number of emails to tell me that customers have been endeavouring to talk to your bank uh, without success over a long number of years and following the last exchange that we have and had and your announcement that you were selling this uh, bundle of prop of, of uh, loans uh, the number of people that have come forward to say that they may be included in this sale that they were fearful uh, and that they could not get an answer from your bank about that and could not get an answer from your bank in terms of a, a remedy uh, to their particular circumstances. So it would appear from that that your efforts to drill down into these figures and contact those that are affected uh, has not been as successful as I would have expected. I would say, so do, you, do, you, do you think you've done enough? Look, I think there's always room to do more. So, so I'm, I, I, I'm that sort of person. Things can always be better. Um, I would say that we have offered 
30,000 <coughs> of our customers long-term treatments. And remember, Chairman, what, what the treatment does, that, that means that we were able to avoid the idea of repossession back at the height of the crisis. So we, we offered 30,000 treatments. We have the largest market share of split mortgages. We've offered 45% um, of all the, the split mortgages that, that um, have been offered through the crisis. Um, I look at how many of those restructures are in place and working. I, I receive letters of complaint too, but I also receive letters of thanks. We complete um, research with customers who have been through our process, and by and large that is uh, favourable feedback that we get from customers. I also look at some of the innovations we have brought to this area in terms of voluntary surrender and debt write-off. And we offer solutions to buy-to-let customers and home loan customers who are willing to engage with us. And in lots of cases, we've, we've written off debt. And I also look at the efforts we're trying to make in terms of mortgage so there, so, so, Well, If you're writing off debt, mm -hmm. uh, why don't you work through your loan book and offer as a solution where it's appropriate writing off debt uh, equivalent to the amount that you might write off for a vulture fund and assist the borrower to continue. So have you done that? We, we have done a large amount of debt write-off. No, but have you, have you written off debt to the tune of the debt that you will have to write off when you sell to a vulture fund? Well, a, a couple of things. We, we don't know to what extent we, we will have to write off debt in terms of any sale. Ah, to, come on, Mr. We, we, we don't. They're not going to pay you over the amount. No, no, they're not. They're but, going but, to pay you well under the amount. Yeah, they, they are. So but, why, not, why, not, why, not, why not give that deal to your customer? In my only remarks, uh, I was very clear that one of the areas that Permit TSB does not do is debt forgiveness. And we need to... We need I'm not to asking for debt forgiveness. Well, well, let's be You're clear. You're going to write off debt when you sell these loans to the vulture funds. So bearing the write-off that you have in mind, maybe the customer might pay you more than what you will receive from the vulture funds in order to restructure a loan. So why not give them the benefit of what you're about to do and allow them to stay in their own home and pay a restructured loan? That's debt forgiveness, and we don't do debt forgiveness. No, it's not debt forgiveness. It's debt forgiveness. We don't All do right, debt so what you're prepared to do is throw these people out on the street in the interest of getting money from the vulture funds, a, 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 a sum that perhaps would be greater if you were to send it directly to your customer. That's not debt forgiveness. You're making them pay, but you're making them pay more than what you might get from the vulture fund. And surely that's of interest to you and your shareholders and balance sheets and everything else. Was it moral hazard to give E4 billion euro? The 4 billion euro, the banks weren't capitalised for, for debt forgiveness. We were told here by a EU commissioner that one of the country specific recommendations for Ireland, in the context of this, was to write off debt. What you are doing is, if I owe you 10 grand and you're going to sell to the vultures for five, would you give it to me for seven and a half or six? That's not debt forgiveness. That's debt write off. And that's you making more money out of that deal than you would with the vulture fund. But you seem to be taking a lazy option. I'm not working down that level. You as a bank, I'm going to take the lump sum from the vultures. How do I address the concern of your other constituent who's worked with us morning, noon and night to repay their debt? How do you address their concern when they say well, that these people another have worked constituent with you morning, noon and night to try and find a solution? I've asked you about debt for equity. I've asked you about debt write down. There's a cost in all of this, and I'm asking you to consider it. But obviously, you are of a mind not to consider it. Because you, you came in this morning, Mr O'Sullivan, and I certainly wouldn't have taken the answer you gave to uh, Deputy Murphy. After our last meeting, 
and after your, your indication that you could not come in to us uh, previous to this, you started to issue PESS statements describing how this uh, loan uh, portfolio would sell. And the figures that we were, the information that we were actually requesting was contained in some of the spin that was put out by your hired hand down there. So therefore, you must know the figures. So when you say some people did not uh, engage with you, you should be able to tell us today, because this is the reason why you're in here, how many did not engage with you? Because you have been endeavouring to create the narrative that these loans that you're selling are being sold because of non-engagement. That is not true. I don't think that's the case. Um, so in our slide presentation today, we're, we're calling out very clearly that there are um, loans associated with 2,700 properties where there's been no engagement by our customer. And we're pointing out for that cohort, and the average amount of arrears for that particular cohort is €50,000 and five years in arrears. <coughs> We're also saying today that there are loans that are for sale where the customer has engaged with the bank and there's no denying that and um, those loans for the technical reasons my, my colleague described earlier are still badged and uh, non-performing loans and the bank is still bound to reach a 5% non-performing loan figure within the medium term. So, But you're willing to put that bundle of loans into the market and you still don't know the outcome in terms of how they're being uh, categorised, whether they're you know, non-performing or not. And they you also... That, that they are non-performing. Sorry? As, uh, they, today they are being categorised as non-performing, but as Stephen um, has outlined, there, there are questions between our bank and our regulator. Um, but today they, they are categorised as non-performing. Well, if they were recategorised after your consultation, do you take them out of the bundle of loans then? We would certainly have to look at the, at the detail of what comes back from the SSM and, and if it gave us that option, um, we, would, we would have to consider taking it out of the, of the sale. Um, I think as Eamon has described, uh, we're at very early stages in terms of uh, the, um, the bundles of loans uh, in the sale as, as you described them um, and we haven't made a formal decision on the final perimeter of, of loans and if in the meantime the SSM comes back um, and gives us an answer that allows us to take them out in a way that can, can work for us um, and our, and our um, stakeholders to, uh, to take them out then we'd, of course we'd have to consider that. Well I, I, I don't agree at all with what you're doing. I think that you have not uh, worked hard, sufficiently hard enough to resolve these issues. Um, I know that within the bank or any other institution, you'll always find uh, a hard core that you'll not be able to deal with. We all accept that. But again, from the evidence that I have been given as chairman of this committee, there is clear indication to me uh, that your bank um, has certainly not engaged in the way that I would expect. I just want to touch on one or two things here very briefly in your opening statement because I don't want to go through here as if it were a fact. We establish a best class infrastructure with up to 300 people working in manage, to manage the arrears challenge. That, that's not the evidence that's coming through from the customers, the letters that we receive from your customers. In relation to the SSM, I've just dealt with that. I think you're wrong to include those loans until such time as you have a, a very clear definition of the position. Uh, and I hope you will look right across that loan uh, portfolio to determine how many uh, can be taken back out of that, that portfolio and will not be sold. Uh, in terms of the... the um, yeah, what you said, Mr. Mazing, uh, <coughs> It's focused, you, you, you're talking about since your announcement uh, and you want to reassure people, I presume, but the Governor of Central Bank has confirmed in recent weeks that where a loan is sold, the protection will travel with the loan and that borrowers are protected in accordance with the consumer protection framework. That's your general comment. In practice, that does not happen. The vultures are not regulated. They don't appear here in front of us. Their agents are not regulated. They don't appear here in front of us. And the attitude of the agents on behalf of the Vulture Fund is despicable. 
In fact, they shouldn't be in business at all by virtue of the, the, the way that they treat people. And certainly, as I said before, any civilised society would not tolerate what's going on in the context of vulture funds. So unless anyone out there be misled by that statement, the opposite is in fact true. That most people that have had the unsavoury experience of dealing with a vulture fund come away deeply unhappy and traumatised. So let, let, let that be clear uh, to those that are about to be thrown to the vultures. It is deeply unpleasant. And uh, finally, in relation to um, the figures and the general approach to the, the tracker issue, I, I'd like to see a simple breakdown of all of the numbers in terms of how many are in arrears because of the tracker issue, how many are deemed to be part of this uh, sellout because of the tracker issue. Um, how many, for example, you, you talked about split mortgages. How many of your split mortgages are over 50%, over 50-50? Do you know how many? Um, so the, the average uh, warehouse is actually 51%, so uh, it's 50-50. Yeah, but take away from the average, and would you have a significant number that are way over the 50-50? Yes. So you have a significant number? As over. in the percentage uh, that is warehoused. Yeah, so how many, how many loans would you have that are broken down into 50-50 and how many loans do you have that are uh, structured in a way that is far greater than 50% warehouse? So it's, it's the full range. So, so we have lots of split loans where the warehouse is small and lots where it's, where it's large. On average, the size of the home loan warehouse is 51%. Well, can you give us a figure? I can. Uh, I don't have it with me today, but of course we can. And that's the reason why you're here today, is to give those figures. That's why we asked you. Well, there you go now. Here, Mr. Cole, yeah. Um, there's in the region of about 50%. Half the portfolio has a warehouse which is above 50%, and half the portfolio have a warehouse below 50%. Roughly. And when you say above 50%, how far above? Is it 70 percent? Is it 55 percent? There's some that go up to a significant level above 70 percent. What would be a significant level? 70 percent? 80 percent. 80 percent? In some cases, yes. So you are selling split mortgages, or mortgages are the 80 percent is warehoused. Was that normal for the bank? Normal in what respect? The size of the warehouse? Or in any respect. The size of the warehouse, 80 percent. When you originally gave out that loan, yeah, I, I think the point there is that that yeah, was a okay. response um, to trying to uh, trying to work with the customer, and, and in some ways it reflects um, the levels to which we were willing to go. So it would be, I suggest, highly unusual in any jurisdiction to have splits in the first place. Um, Ireland. Uh, as a jurisdiction uh, probably has the highest level of split mortgages as a response to this type of crisis. And I think within that jurisdiction, within Ireland, we've gone to greater lengths in terms of the amount of debt that we warehouse. So when, when we talk about going up to an 80% warehouse, that means that we've actually taken 80% of the repayment off the table until the maturity of the mortgage in order to allow the, uh, the customer to stay in their home. And so it, it, it actually represents the lengths to which we were willing to go uh, to, to work with the customer. And, and I think if you compare that to other jurisdictions in the UK, US or continental Europe, that level of forbearance would be unheard of. No interest is charged on that warehouse. Oh, I understand so, that. So, so we're giving customers in those situations as much room and time to, to address their problems. What do possible. you say to this statement that you have 6,000 customers who engaged and completed all documentation and adhered to your terms and conditions and are now being sold? Make, make two points. And so um, we've alluded um, very, well, more than alluded, we've been very explicit that we have asked the SSM um, specific questions. And um, to be frank, nobody in the system has, has asked uh, as vociferously as we have, uh, albeit that's in private between ourselves and the regulator, to try and get clarity um, on that question. Um, so you shouldn't take it that we, we have been taking it lying down, that these have been classified as non performing. Uh, we have been the questions we have put were with the view to trying to get an answer to get them reclassified, uh, but we can only work on the basis of, of um, 
the, the treatment that is in place today in terms of the interpretation of the regulation. Um, I, I should also maybe just go back to a point that you made around the, the tracker issue. So um, we were here before in terms of the, the 1,979 customers who have been identified um, by us as being impacted by uh, the tracker issue. So they are not part of this sale. Um, so they have been excluded from uh, the, the, uh, the last portfolio. And so there isn't a, a, a crossover between the two issues. Senator O'Donnell. Chairman. Um, I just want to take up a couple of, couple of points, right?